Hey guys, welcome back to Daddy Jeep Garage. This week it's going to be a short. We're going to talk about why I'm going to fail at building the ultimate rock crawler transmission. So it turns out, according to the internet, it said that I could take the first gear ratio out of a 4L60E and put it into my Turbo 350. Well, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. Imagine that. So it turns out that some machine work has to happen. It's not easy to accomplish that. You need some machining tools. You need some special techniques, not something you're gonna do in your home shop. So bottom line is we're not putting the 306 to one first gear ratio in the Turbo 350. So where we go from here, since we can't build the ultimate Turbo 350, we're just gonna build a normal Turbo 350. We're just gonna rebuild it with new clutches, do a couple small mods and throw it in the Jeep and wheel it. So of course, what we have laid out on the bench here are the remnants of two transmissions. We pulled apart my, my Turbo 350 here, as well as a 4L60E, all to harvest these parts here. So Turbo 350 parts on the left, 4L60E parts on the right. You can see the sun shells are quite a bit different, which I don't think that matters. We're not using, we weren't ever you planning on using the 4L60E sun shell. What we were planning on using was the 4L60E 3.06 to 1 first gear set. And you can see they look, at first glance, kind of similar, but the closer you look, the less similar they look. First major difference is the main shaft, or the output shaft on the 4L60E is uh, not really attached, where the one on the Turbo 350 is, I believe with just a snap ring. I, I can come off, I think. Yeah, there is a snap ring in there that could come off, so that's not a huge difference. So if we look at the planetary gear sets themselves, outside diameters are the same. Dimensionally, they're pretty much the same. You can see the larger spread on this one just because of the different gears, but the biggest difference comes when you look at the center. So the Turbo 350 one has a pressed in bushing and it just rides on this shaft. 4L61 is splined, so can't really swap these two. So I, I was understanding there's some machining involved, so I don't know if that means boring, cutting this spline section out and welding it over here. I, again, I couldn't find clear cut answers on the internet on exactly what had to be swapped around to make this happen, but short answer is it's not gonna happen. I'm, I just can't see a, a way to easily make it work It'd have been cool to get the lower gearing in my transmission, but at this point, we're just going to put it back together, do a couple other mods. But unfortunately, my ultimate Turbo 350 thought is out the window. You can buy the lower gear sets, but they're like 700 bucks, and it's just not worth it for me to go there. I'm just hoping I could mix and match between parts that I already owned. But can't do that, so we're going to move forward and just get this Turbo 350 rebuilt. All right, the transmission is done, ready to go back in the Jeep. Uh, again, we did a couple of mods to it. We uh, added the uh, center support from the 4L60E because it's stronger. We also dual fed the direct drum and we drilled out a couple of the orifices in the uh, mid, mid plate in the valve body. All right, guys, thanks for watching this little short video. Keep an eye out for the full build of this Turbo 350. We're editing that and we'll have it out to you real soon. Um, thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe. We'll see you next time.